want to kindly please uh, settle down, take your places, as we are about to begin this workshop very, very shortly. I would request you all also to please put your mobile phones on silent mode. You know, you should Thank you so much. Your, your stuff, but it gives you that much more flexibility. You're gaining a sensor that like doesn't belong in a camera of this price point. the hall take your places uh, also we request you to please put your mobile phones on silent mode we will be beginning very very shortly thank you about a scientist and a robot and the scientist just turned on the robot for the first time and says I want you to go out into the world and experience the world unbiased and as a blank slate to give the scientist some uh, truthful answers about life. The low light capabilities of the Lumix GH5S really can't be understated. Hello. The ability to have two native Hello. ISOs, Check. 400 Check. and ISO 2500, Check. essentially One, allowed two, us to light Check. our subject Check. using two Auto TVs. Auto. We were at ISO 2500, which is the Hello, high end check. of the native ISO one by one range, one. which is to be the best dynamic range ek, and noise ek, ek, check. performing like check. full frame Hello. 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 Check. check. We used the Zeiss Master Anamorphic Prime. Hello. We were shooting in 10-bit 4x3 Anamorphic mode, also in 24p check. and 400 megabits per Hello. second. Check. Some 30p, just to give us that 80% slow-mo if needed. Huh? Shooting exteriors in Oregon obviously provides some check. challenges Hello. with the Hello. weather. During one of our last nights of filming, it started Hello. raining. Check. Check. Check.
sound check. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I request you all to please uh, take your seats. And all our guests who are at the back, I would request you all also to please uh, step forward, settle down. And uh, one small request to please put your mobile phones on silent mode. I know we all are very busy, but we would not want to be disturbing our guests. our guests to please settle down. I request everyone at the back to kindly please uh, settle down and take your seats so that we can get going, ladies and gentlemen. have settled in yes can I get a yes yes okay a very warm welcome to all of you here at the workshop of the Lumix G uh, well uh, ladies and gentlemen as you all know that we have already uh, done with the launch we did that this afternoon and now we are going to talk more about the Lumix G uh, H5S yes of course uh, ladies and gentlemen I would also like to tell you that Panasonic is very very happy not only because we did a great launch in the afternoon but we have two more special reasons to be celebrating as you can see it is the 10th anniversary of the Lumix and yes of course the 100th anniversary of Panasonic so can we please give Panasonic a big round of applause love and light and many more to come marking the company's 100th anniversary Panasonic strengthened its vision to bring innovation to lifestyle and to society by drawing on the DNA cultivated over the years as an electronics company. Over the past 17 years, Panasonic has stood on the forefront of digital camera development and delivered many world's first technologies such as high zoom and OIS for compact cameras, world's first mirrorless camera, full HD and 4K mirrorless dual image stabilizer, and 18 megapixel 30 frame per second bout shooting and so on. Panasonic will continue to lead innovation in the camera industry for many, many years to come. As an inv inventor of mirrorless camera, Panasonic has developed unique technologies to achieve high picture quality, high speed performance, mobility and usability, and professional level video technologies as a core competence. And uh, yes, of course, like I told you, we all just did the launch of the Lumix GH5S camera today, and we will be talking about it. But before we get on to that, I would like to invite on stage Mr. Vijay Vathwan. He is the Business Head of Systems and Solutions Division for Panasonic India to please come and talk. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Vijay Vathwan, and I run the SSD business for Panasonic India and Sark. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank all of you for taking time out of your busy schedules and coming over here to attend the workshop of uh, GH5S. 
Before we go ahead with the product and talk about the features and the differentiators that this product has and what it brings to the market, I will just take you around to Panasonic as an organization, although you've been associated with us for a pretty long time, but still just let you know as to what Panasonic is all about as an organization, our business philosophy, the way we kind of manufacture our products, and what is the thought behind manufacturing of these products. So Panasonic as a company was founded by our founder, Mr. Konosuke Matsushita, way back in 1918. So 2018 happens to be our centenary year, uh, one of the most important year for us because we complete our 100 years of foundation. This company, which started as a company to manufacture, you know, holders for electric bulbs, has evolved over these 100 years into all facets of human conveniences. Whether it is television, it was audio, two-in-ones, we've all grown up with that. So we manufacture products for human convenience. And as our present president says, Panasonic makes products for a better life, a better world. Now, you know, why is it that we've been able to do this over such a long period? Is our commitment to the markets in which we operate. It's a commitment to the partners like you who've been there with us all this while. And it is really heartening to see that the partner fraternity that we have over here has been associated with us for a very, very long time. If you look at our businesses, the way it, they've been kind of bucketized into different buckets, there are four companies within Panasonic in which we operate. We've got the automation and industrial systems company. We've got uh, eco solutions company. We've got connected solutions company and an appliance company. So all our products, whether they are personal care products, they are IT products, they are products which cater to the BFSI segment, the education segment, manufacturing, all these are bucketized into these four buckets. When it comes to the imaging business, we've been leaders in this business for last 40 years since we got into this business. And the reason we feel that we've been so successful in this business are twofold. One, over the years we've been able to garner a lot of in-house expertise which helps us in keeping us ahead of the curve, keeping up, us coming up with cutting edge products which can be taken to the market. As the lady said, we have created so many firsts in the market. That is something which definitely you know, differentiates us with our competition. The other thing is we hear very closely as to what our customers want out of us. You would find Panasonic creates products after aligning its R&D with the voice of customer which we hear from the market. And that is the reason you would find products coming to the market which are relevant to the market along with them being future ready. So even if you look at our 4K range, you would find that being there, future ready. You would also find products like you know, GH5S, which would be very ideal for an Indian environment. GH5, the product that we launched last year, took us into the DLS, DSLRM, DSLM uh, market. And with the new GH5S, we feel that we are going to further consolidate our position in the evolving high-end videography market. So this is something which we feel is definitely going to give us an edge in the market and would be a differentiator. Technology you would have seen has been evolving over a period of time in all facets of life and so has it evolved in the imaging business as well. Last three to four years, if you look at it, the shooting style has been changing, right? The DSLR cameras today are becoming more and more smaller in terms of its form factor because that gives you an easy, easy access to the mobility that is required for this kind of a shooting style. Pro camera market for us is also evolving. We've seen a growth in the wedding market because we do a lot of adjacent businesses along with the camera business in the wedding segment. That market also is going up. And when we look at our high-end products like UX 180 and all, you would find a lot of candid videography also happening in that front along with this camera. So overall, what we feel is that the market sentiment definitely is positive. The market is moving in the right direction. And I think this new product that we're going to launch today, about which both Nick and uh, our, our, our DOP from India are going to talk about, is something which would definitely position ourselves in the segment in which we want to be, which according to us is a fairly large segment which, would, which we can address. So without taking more time, I would now request uh, both of them to come to the stage and probably talk about those differentiated features which would definitely help you understand the product better and also would help you establish this, this product in the market with far more enthusiasm that 
you've been able to do G with GH5. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for coming in over here. And now I hand over the stage to Nick and uh, Sandeep. Sandesh. Thank you all very much. Yes, uh, but uh, before we get on to that, um, of course, uh, the solution is already out. The solution is the Lumix GH5S. That is the solution. But there would be no solution if there were no problems. Now to understand why we have actually come up to this point, why we did the launch, why we have this beautiful, amazing new uh, device here amongst us, I would like to quickly demonstrate you the problems that we had to go through, the problems why we, that we were facing. For instance, I will just tell you about my own self. I'm standing here on this beautiful, beautiful stage. I'm talking. Now with my work, my line of work, I need a video. I need a very nice, very clear video. But they, this is, there's, there's so much of, like the light is, sometimes the lighting is good, but not always. I have to face low light problems and so many more problems, so on and so forth. But just to quickly demonstrate you what those problems were to which we came up to a solution with. So I would like to quickly do a quick demonstration. Is there somebody over here who would like to help me with that? Come on. Yes, I, I am. Who, where, where are you? Oh, there, there you are. Okay. I have a lot of problems with my camera. I have a lot of problems with my camera. So I'm here to, for finding some solutions. So I will take on the stage now. So Let's you, find some solutions Yes, now. you do that. And I will go and find those people who found the solution. Exactly. I'm going to explain it you to us. You go and find them and yes. I will find the solution. All right. So I have a YouTube channel. So I will describe what I do over there on the count of 10. Okay. One. So please count with me. Two. Okay, let's go. Ten. Done. So you know budget came out? Budget. A big, heavy budget. So heavy that our pockets got teared up. A big black hole in our pockets. A very big black hole in our pockets. So I know, I know my subscribers would want to know more. So I said, I said, let's quickly, let's quickly fata for do a vox pop. And I did it. I did it. And you know what? You know what? What I got? I got this. See. <coughs> Nothing. Nothing on the footage. Just shadows. Nothing on the footage. Not even a mosquito biting. Nothing on the footage. I traveled one hour. One hour. 3600 and seconds. To where? CP. One hour to CP and one hour for shadows. One hour for shadows. Hey, excuse me. Hey. Did I hear one hour? Yes, I said one hour. Did you say one hour? Yes. I, I tell you something, brother. You know what happened? You know what happened? So like for five hours, I was sitting at a machan. Oh my God. <laughs> now trust me on that. I was sitting at a machan for like five hours. I was low on food, almost out of water. How did you survive, buddy? <laughs> that even I don't know. And trust me, I was not even chewing my food loudly. And you know what happened? What? Then I had to go. No, sir, don't look at me like that. It was just a nature's call in the nature. Sometimes <laughs> it happens. Happens. <laughs> and post that, just before the dawn, I see this, you know, like, like this tiger approaching. Oh, nice. And I knew, and I knew that, that I will be having an amazing footage of this. Exactly. You know, like, like rising sun. Oh. Glorious cat. Oh, meow. Oops. But then, but then when I looked at the footage, I saw this. Oh, what's that? I don't know. Meow. You see that glorious cat, by the way. <laughs> it's moonwalking. This is the glorious cat I got. Are you sure you shot this? Yep. So to be very honest, I got nothing. Just a shadow approaching towards me. Uh, That's only it. shadows. Yeah. Only shadows. Yeah. <laughs> shadows. Did I hear shadows? Yes. I said shadows. Did you also get shadows? I only got shadows. <laughs> I will like and subscribe to him. We also got shadows. These shadows just killed me. Yeah. I mean, ek to raat ki shadi. Tick. 
ऊपर से यू डोंट हैव अ फूफा जी एवरी डे हु कैन डांस इन अ गैंगडम स्टाइल टिक एंड एट द एंड व्हाट आई गॉट शैडोस शैडोस टिक ओ शैडोस डांसिंग इन अ शादी आई हैव नो आईडिया व्हाट्स रॉन्ग इट वाज लाइक जस्ट आई वाज फिल्मिंग फॉर लॉर्ड्स ऑफ द रिंग इट्स ओके आई फील बैड फॉर यू इट्स ओके हे you know one more thing so i was going for this extremely slow motion shot actually okay. you know like, like extremely slow motion shot and just before like i i didn't even get that i didn't even get that nothing not even this mm-hmm. not even this no nope. oh you're kidding me no exactly that's what my problem is what will i show to my subscribers ha huh? what will i show this lovely beautiful subscribers what will i show shadows no hey hey ek minute by the way did you to subscribe to my channel ha huh? did, did you do did you to subscribe to my channel huh? did you to not be dent i'll tell you why because my thumb and my hand hurts why you know that camera oh, nice. bulky okay. one which i carry like this okay. You know, I tell you, I don't need a gym right now to make my body. I don't need a gym. And the body was so hot on that night. Hey, she man, huh? She man. Here we guys are talking about cameras, and look at this guy. He wants to talk about hot women at the weddings. Arey na baba. Bodies were so hot. I huh? was not talking about the women. She I was talking. Oh, oh, listen na. I was talking about the body of camera. It became so hot that I have to switch it off. I miss so many precious moments, and now the client is super unhappy on me. So tell me, what should I do now? Tell me I don't know what you should do I don't have any solution for you Do you have any solution for it huh Do you Eh wild life shadows do you have any solution for it No I don't huh? have any solution Nothing nope. Does anyone over here have a solution for it Anyone over here I me. guess Me The least credible one but still If you remember in the day I did give the solution. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to call these two senior very talented DOPs who are here with us Nick and Sandesh to please come and join me on stage and they are going to tell us more about the solution. Yes. We found the solution. Yes. We did. We did. Let's see. We found the solution. Guys, the solution. thank you so much. All right. Thanks for the now, solution. Yes. Okay. So over to both of them and this is now where Uh, formally our workshop is going to now start and we are going to be talking about All right over to you guys Where's the energy everybody here yeah. All right Can you hear me? Yes. Testing testing yeah Testing testing one two This is Nick Driftwood and right, Sandesh Sandra. Kadur <laughs> He's going to talk to you about himself I get checked up. No, no, no. We don't we need to give them a solution. They don't okay, want to hear us okay. talking nonsense. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, before we give you the solution and we've got a brilliant solution. We're just going to quickly run through who we are. So, this is me. Apparently, I'm the one making it moving movies forward, as you can see. I'm up now. So, I'm Nick Driftwood. I'm from Brighton, near London in England. Uh, I'm a D- DOP, director of photography. For those that, what that means, um, a director and cinematographer. Uh, various th- films, etc. You'll be able to find online. Um, and I, my next shoot is Swim to Land, Sandesh. What have you been up to? Well, so I'm not Nick Driftwood. I'm Sandesh Kadoor. I'm a Indian-based uh, DOP. I'm based in Bangalore, but I work for National Can't Geographic and the BBC. How many people here have seen Planet Earth? A couple of people. That's good. So uh, the last Planet Earth, Planet Earth Two, is something that I worked on, and right now I'm working on a project right here in India on big cats, tigers, snow leopards, lions. Wow. Crowded leopards. India and Africa. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, well, while he was talking to you, I just press play, and you can see that this is my. Uh, any of you have got a GH5 or seen a GH5? This is uh, my latest film in London, shot on the GH5 in hybrid log gamma, which we're going to be talking to you guys about shortly. Um, and this was a little film, three-minute film, set in uh, in London about a girl on a mission to find herself. Um, she wants to um, bury the ashes of her dead mother, 
and it's a spiritual journey in which we went across the land, the green, green lands of the UK and filmed with drones, um, with trailers, with the GH5 in hybrid log gamma in 10 bit. And um, you may have seen this already on YouTube, on the Panasonic site. Uh, it went down very, very well indeed. And um, we had a really, really good time with the camera, the GH5. But there was always something missing in my mind, and that was its low light ability. And I'm always looking for a solution, Sandesh. And I'm sure that you yourself, who's got nothing to show at this stage of the presentation, you found yourself always looking for that little bit more from the GH5, wouldn't you say? Yeah, uh, so for the last year, I've also been using the GH5 a lot. I've made a lot of documentaries. We used to start with the GH4 and was blown away by it, used it in conjunction with a lot of other high-end cinema cameras, then started using the GH5 last year and was very, very pleased with the picture quality, the 10-bit internal recording that you could do with the camera. But in scenes like this, a little bit noisy, like the shadows, right? I was like, I want a little bit more. Yeah. I want a little bit more light. Yeah, yeah absolutely. No, I totally agree with you, actually. And um, you know, I think that's probably what's um, you know, led to the development of this brand new camera we're going to be seeing shortly. Um, so moving swiftly on, you can see this on the internet. This is what we're really talking about. Here we have the GH1, GH2, GH3, GH4, GH5, and now the fantastic solution we spoke about. And there it is, the S is the solution, the GH5S. Um, a brand new camera, which is designed for the professional videograph filmmaker cinema market. And it's a multi-aspect sensor which is the same as the old GH1 and GH2. Um, now, before I explain what that means, I'm just going to take a quick drink of water. So what we've got here, and Sandesh, I'm sure you know what this means as well too. This sensor here is actually bigger than the GH5. It's, um, it's, a, it's got um, twice the size of pixels as the GH5 but only half the pixels. That's because 4K filming only needs around 8.7 megapixels. And this has got 10.28 megapixels, but there's something clever going on. Um, so it's not just a, a, a 4x3 uh, sensor, it's a slightly oversized sensor, and it means that it incorporates um, wider uh, for the cinema 4K and 3x2 photography a wider aspect ratio, but giving the same field of view, the same diagonal, which means that when you put the same lens on and change the aspect ratio, it doesn't look as though it's been cropped or blown up. So we're back to the GH1 and GH2 style with this, and we've got some very, very clever incorporation um, technology in that. You know all about the multi-aspect sensor? Oh, yeah. So here's the rundown, Sandesh. Do you want to read this out? Oh boy, look at that. 10.28 sensor rolling shutter suppression, nearly twice as big pixels as the GH5, which basically means better in low light because the pixel sizes is bigger. It absorbs light better and thereby it's a solution to the problem that a lot of people were having with low light. It's more sensitive. Next one. And oh, also the dual native shutter. ISO, that's a good one. I was going to say something about rolling shutter. When you move a frame across left or right, and we'll demonstrate this later on, there's less jello effect, yeah? That wobble. With the GH5S now, it's, it's like, almost like a global shutter. Um, yeah. It's that good. Next one. Oh, this is, this is one of my favorite. Dual native ISO. What does that mean? Look, the ISO sensitivity, this is what, how sensitive the gain is your camera to light. Um, so we have now got a dual ISO, native ISO, one set at low for 400 and one set at 2500. We're going to come to that shortly and demonstrate that. The multi-aspect sensor, as I just said, 4x3, 79, 69 and 3x2, there's no crop like the GH5's got. So um, fantastic for using the same lens over different aspects. 14-bit RAW. So how many people here use do time-lapse animation? Couple of people time-lapse animation? 
Okay, so I, I, I do it all the time. Time lapses for documentaries is a must. And with 14-bit raw still images, each image, and then stitching up your time lapses within the camera, just like the GH5, it's super powerful, super useful, and, and an, an example we'll show later on. You got an example time lapse. Show. We're just gonna run through this very quickly, then we're gonna show you some stuff. Um, 4K, 60p, 50p recording in cinema 4K. That's the cinema mode. So with the GH5S, like the GH5, you can shoot in DCI if you're shooting for the theater and preparing it for theater. Um, you can do that with this camera. But not only that, it will shoot in 24p, 25p, 30p, 50p, 60p, um, and all in 8-bit or 10-bit, 50p, 60p through the HDMI. You're on, 240, 240 frames. frames per second in full HD. So in GH5, you maxed out at 180. So here we're jumping up to 240 frames per second, slowing down the action. Great for sports, wildlife, anything, you name it. So we go beyond that, as you see, 180 frames on the GH5, we now do 240 frames per second. That's amazing. And we're gonna show you some footage shortly about that. We've now got V-Log v -log included on the camera. You don't have to pay for it separately. It's a log, logarithmic, a logarithmic curve, if I can say it. Um, so it, it can trap as much dynamic range as possible out of this sensor. Yeah, V-Log is something that was an exclusive domain of the higher end cinema cameras. And the GH5, you got it as an extra five, 6,000 rupee purchase and you, you inserted it into the camera, making it a professional video camera. Now with this built in, Panasonic is just saying, look, this is professional, let's put it in. And yeah. that's one thing I love, dual native ISO, V-Log, all high-end cinema camera functions inserted into this camera. And now I'm gonna run through some of these very quickly now. We've also got a wired time code in out. This port here comes off, and then a BNC cable attachment adapter, so you've got real time code, sync locking, jamming as we call it, um, between a multi-camera setup, or uh, a clock driver in a master-slave scenario. You probably use that in broadcasting. Oh yeah, it's very good to sync two, three cameras together, especially when you're doing interviews and live, live stuff. Exactly. Yeah. We've also got a live view boost, 120 frames per second, the screen's flying around it, so you see everything as it happens. There's not any delay. Um, we've got a line level audio available, so you can actually plug in a cable from your audio desk, like the one over here, and then you can inf you know, infuse that with you know, real audio as well as microphones. We then also Full got- Full NTSC and PAL, making it a worldwide compatible camera, either NTSC, PAL, the world's divided, this camera can do, do both. And then we've got the 4210 bit uh, and 400 megabytes all intra, all intra over the long got, much better uh, codec compression, um, fantastic looking color, which we're gonna talk about shortly. Anamorphic and HDR hybrid log gamma recording we'll talk about. A plethora of different frame rates and H.264 and H.265 and finally Dual SD card slots. You can take pictures, videos, you know, and duplicate them and two slots which is very very useful when you're trying to back up stuff. So that's a lot of information Nick. I hope you ingested that because it's taken a little bit of time. I think to this write camera does a little too much. <laughs> All right, so we here, we have the GH5, the handheld shooting. Um, it had that IBIS that everyone loved sort of thing for the sort of, uh, the, the, the sort of person, small documentary style, um, vlogging, whatever. Um, but we wanted something, as professional filmmakers, we wanted to have uh, a, a stable, fixed sensor, which didn't move when you mounted it on tripods, um, gimbals, etc. A lot of filmmakers were asking for that. So with the GH5S, we've got that stable fixed sensor and we use external stabilizers for Ibis, for, over IBIS because it's much more professional. Uh, and likewise with tripods in your own uh, Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, a lot of people have been asking us why, okay, the image stabilizer has been removed. Well, to be very honest, as professional camera people, we turn camera image stabilizing off most of the time. So with it removed and cameras, and now with all of this new technology with these type of gimbals, you can actually have much more fluid movement without the problem of having an image stabilizer built in. 
And that's, I think, a very good decision. Absolutely. So um, we've got, uh, as well as that, the, the dual native eyes that I'm going to talk about shortly. Um, the quick differences are then between the GH5 and the GH5S. This is why you need um, to have a serious look at what the GH5S can do if you are deliberating. Um, a 10.2 megapixel high sensitivity MOS sensor with multi aspect support, dual native ISO. We now are slightly better at low light auto focusing, minus 5 EV over the minus 4, so a bit more of a stop there of uh, focusing in the dark. Um, we've got obviously the 14 bit, the 12 over the 12 bit autofocus and um, speed, AFS speed of 11 frames per second. We've also got the support for cinema 4K and 50p, 60p in 10 bit through the HDMI and 8 bit internally. Um, and then, of course, Vlogs pre installed, time coding out because the time code on here is done by GPS on the GH5 and it did have a tendency to lose its way a bit um, in, in drop frame. Mm. So you can see there quite a few differences. And there we are, the, the, the GH5S uses a slightly larger sensor down the bottom than the GH5. So uh, a 4x3 sensor. These corners aren't used, but it means that Cinema 4K and 3x2 um, it fully utilizes the same diagonal field of view. So if we hit play on that, let's have a look at this, what this sensor is doing. It's probably a better way of just demonstrating it. So this is the GH5S. And you can see here, if we just pause it a second, so we're just showing you, at the moment, 16 by 9. If you pause it, and then we're actually showing you 4 by 3. Um, press play again. I'll go back and play it again. Right, just press play. I'm sorry, I've only got one controller here. So when this comes up, you'll see that inside the 4 by 3 aspect, the red one, this is where the GH5 is, and 16.9 and 17.9 is actually inside on the GH5. With the GH5S, it's extended outside the area. I'm sorry, we have kind of lost. Don't worry, we'll move on. So, what's happening with this sensor, Sandesh? Do you have a quick explanation with this one? I'll do this one. So, if you look at the GH5, the 20 megapixel, it's the, the size of each pixel is much smaller when compared to the GH5S where you see each pixel is much larger in size. What does that do, Nick? Right, well, what's, so we're getting more light. Basically, what's happening is um, it's 1.96 times bigger than the GH5. So actually, we're getting uh, uh, this ability to actually have with a bigger pixel density. Um, it's about 4.8 or something um, over 8 point, or, oh, sorry, 9.2 on the GH5. So we're getting more light in. Uh, bigger sensor pixels, and that means that when the dual uh, native ISO is actually kicking in, there's actually more photon, more uh, light coming from the photon to be read into the gain. So we've got faster readout, again, suppressed rolling shutter, and um, this higher ISO sensitivity, which means there's lower noise at the two native ISOs, and then subsequently going forward, there's less noise as well if you're going to be using you know, 800 ISO, 1600 ISO, and then the high modes as well, 3200 and way, way above. So hopefully, we can show how it's working. What's going on here? On the sensor, each pixel has two analog circuits running in tandem, and there's a capacitor which switches each one in. So it switches it in for the low or the high um, ISO uh, circuit, with a low ISO circuit and a low noise circuit, and that will actually give better signal to noise ratio and less noise in the low, in the low, uh, in the dark, basically. So it can see much better in the dark. And if you have a look at our demonstration later on, you'll know exactly what we mean. Sandesh? Oh yeah, so um, as, as a DOP, I've been using dual native ISO for many years now, and let me tell you, there's no other camera that has this in this small size and form factor. This is something, again, that was something that was in the realm of professional, high-end, very cam type cameras, cameras that cost $50,000, that's like over 30 lakh, and those cameras had dual native ISO support. And Panasonic has now brought that into the smaller Lumix range of cameras, 
given the same technology and it's like a turbo power boost and what this camera can do in low light and you can test it out right here later on at the end of the show and you can see the signal to noise ratio that Nick is talking about very clean imagery in low light that's what this technology means to us and here you can see the GH5 and a single native ISO the roll off there is around sort of uh, 6400 between 800 and 6400 this one can go much much higher into the extended ISO yeah the 51230 um, so you can see really clean and clear pictures in the dark and here we have a little demonstration from the earlier um, initial presentation this was shot about 6 p.m. when it was quite dark actually um, in the UK and you can see by rolling through the ISOs here you can just make out 2500 which is the native high it can really see very very well indeed in fact can you just press play one more time anywhere on the screen you can press play so if you look down here at the ISO L80 and then 200 and 400 native 800 16 32 2500 very very clear no noise when it gets you know really really does bring the gain in fantastic dual ISO and here's uh, a film I shot in uh, Marrakesh recently um, it's a three minute film so you've got a break now Sandy sorry about that <laughs> um, and this is shot in Marrakesh and it's about an artist and he was inspired by what he saw with HDR volume up so coming back to Marrakesh with the GH5 was amazing was able to capture all of this information that I couldn't last time I was out there. It was seeing the amount of detail now, the size I can, I can enlarge a, a person to, is quite remarkable. So to see what HDR is doing, it's like, ah, oh, that's exactly what I'm doing. That's how to incorporate it. If I build up this other detail in the darker spaces and the other with the colors, more subtlety with the colors, those highlights sit in a dream. When I'm choosing what to frame, there's just a yes moment. There's a now, that's it, got it. Oh, it's coming up, it's coming up, I've got to catch it. There it is, bang, and that's very exciting. Then there's another moment, which is in the studio, which is when I've got a hundred pictures to look at, and one of them will just leap out. And out of all those bang moments, one of them had a second level. And then when I then begin to paint it big, that will then have another bang moment of, I know what this is about. And I took about 12 photographs from the square, above the square, and I took them and I painted from them again and again, up until a couple of years ago. And I got to know every single person in each of the photographs. I've been painting professionally for about 15 years. The work I do um, in other mediums informs painting. And uh, it's all about people and their shadows. Put the audio down on that one. Um, unfortunately, we're playing an HD file inside a PowerPoint projection, so we're not seeing exactly the right kind of detail, but I think you get the idea. Um, it's a fantastic film which will be shown very shortly on YouTube. You have to see it properly in all so, its glory. So, Nick, I have a quick question there. Yeah. So, um, what's the advantage of filming it in HLG? Well, with, with, with HLG, hybrid log gamma, 
This is the new HDR uh, standard, which is a delivery format. It means you don't really have to do any grading. You can turn around HDR-looking pictures very, very quickly. And you can do this with the GH5S and the GH5, of course. But the GH5S, with employing the new dual ISO, native ISO, so it's better in the dark, uh, and the color tonality is just that much better. So the advantages are that you know, you've got this Rec 709 meets log kind of curve. It sits in between, and hybrid log gamma, when it's displayed on an HDR TV like the two we've got over there, it can look really, really beautiful. And that means detail in the highlights. You know, things look much more realistic. And this is what's coming, this is the, the next big revolution in television, in production, and everything that I've seen on Netflix coming out now as well, online. Um, 10-bit 422 is becoming the de facto standard. And over the next few years, you're going to see the increase of you know, HDR TVs. Panasonic have got a whole new line of uh, fantastic looking HDR TVs. But it means that you guys can already get involved now, record stuff, film stuff in HDR uh, with this fantastic camera, and get the best out of it knowing that it will relay and play back beautifully on the, these, these new HDR TVs. So fantastic looking, realistic images. Okay, great. Um, so Cinema 4K DCI, we've got that. We play, you can touch on this one if you want, Sandesh. What we played this earlier on, actually. So this is uh, a little bit about, we can record now in 8-bit, 10-bit, um, but 42 10-bit to an Atomos recorder, such as this. This is an Atomos um, hard disk recorder. So uh, this will shoot and record in 8-bit and 10-bit up to 30p. When it gets to 50p, 60p, you've now got the ability to shoot in digital cinema or DCI 4K, we call it cinema 4K, um, through the HDMI into this device. Uh, and the Atomos uh, Shogun and Ninja is one of the only sort of devices really which support that mode. But the, the footage looks fantastic, and this has got lots of HDR and HLG tools to help you expose correctly. So skin tones as well look even better than ever before because of that 10 bit. I'm going to go back on that one. Just hit play in the middle anywhere on that. Um, this is shot to, in 10 bit ton tonality. People always worry about um, skin tones. So around, I always say, sort of 50%, 65%. IRE for skin tones with the GH5S um, and it can look really really good. Some I've done on the Atomos and some uh, you'll find a shot just directly straight into the SD card in 10 bit uh, and this camera can really pull it off in fact much better than what it's actually seeing within this PowerPoint presentation which kind, kind of adds uh, a, a very rich glow to it um, but again you'll be able to see this online under the Nick Driftwood uh, YouTube pages. So the variable frame rate, you want to quickly run through that? Yeah, so um, variable frame rate. Now this is again something that professional cameras have, the GH5 has it, again the GH5S. You've got 24, 25, 30p, 50p, 60p, internal recording uh, in 4K, right? Up to in 50p, 60p. Correct. Yep. And uh, that's all internal onto, your own, uh, onto the internal SD card. Anything beyond that at 10 bit, you need to then put it onto that Atomos. And so it's a true um, broadcast friendly camera in, in yeah. every sense of the word. Yeah. USA and uh, Europe, NTSC and PAL support and um, all the frequency and also the cinema frequency of 24 hertz is supported. So variable frame rates, we just hit play. We have 240 on the left. You can see the speed of these things. It's probably a little bit hard to see but 125 to 240 it's going to show something a little bit of a better demonstration in a minute, but the actual uh, motion drop of the liquid is much slower. And you see it demonstrated here um, in a surfing video. This is Stephen Clary's surfing video at 240 frames per second on the GH5S. And this is in high definition. This in is HD. in a a FHD, only yeah. HD. So 240 is HD. Variable frame rate is in fact like the GH5 HD. Yeah. Up to 60p uh, this, in 4K. This will be great for sports. Sports, action. Like I, I, I just did a video a few days ago. We were dirt skiing down the mountains and we tried all the way up to 180 frames per second 
and it was just beautiful. Just the detail of all that earth flying up. So I can see that right here. Yeah, it's fantastic. And you can see, because of this dual ISO technology, where it sees in the shadows, uh, in, the, in the high ISO setting at 2,500, you now get all the detail in the darker sides, even in slow motion footage like this. I can tell you one thing. Once you guys get addicted to using slow motion, you might start using it too much because it's fun. Everything looks beautiful in slow motion, right? It is. It's fantastic to slow it down. And here's another bit of footage, I think, with slow-mo. Um, this is two frames to 240. We're actually showing um, the differences between three different frame rates. 240 on the right. You can see how slow it is. 150 in the middle. And I think it's 120 down the left. I can't quite see it. But you can see there's a, a notable difference and, um, you know, it's really good fun to play with slow-mo with this camera. So, the other thing is, quick explanation, do we all know what 422 10-bit is? Hands up if you don't know what it is. Anyone know who doesn't know what it is? Okay, well, quickly, explanation. Um, so, we take a typical sample block of four pixels when we do codec uh, sampling and compression. Now here, um, so that's the four, the first, we call it A4, is the first uh, indication of the four blocks. And the second is the first row, and the third number is the fourth row. So every pixel is chroma subsample here. So that's 444. Four, four. Here, every two blocks are sampled, on both lines, two, 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 two for four blocks. And then at 4208 bit, as you were all aware, we only get the top two lines, only are sampled, two pixels and two pixels, yeah? Down the bottom there, nothing is sampled, it's just a representation or chroma subsample of the top line. But it still looks very good, even at 8 bit, as you are probably aware, and broadcast is still very much in the 8-bit domain. But it, what it does mean, if you are recording in 422 10-bit... So basically what we're talking about is the difference between millions of colors to billions of colors. Now when you're doing 422, the kind of grading that you get in colors is in the billions. You have that number, you have the number, oh here, here, here we go, there we go. That's, that's, that's your number, which basically means when our eyes are seeing in those kinds of shades of billions, so when you multiply the factor between 422 color and 420 color in the previous generation, you will see that 422 has that many billions of colors of grading more than 420. So having 422 10-bit internal gives you a lot more flexibility for color corrections, for animation, for blue screen, green screen, Anything that you need to do, where you need to pull out the subject from the background, all that kind of stuff you can do because you have more control, because you have more colors. So you can have better separation. Yeah. For every bit, it doubles. So you can see that 8 bit, we get to 10 bit. So we double 256, double 512 is 9 bit. 10 bit is 1024 because 512 doubled. So 1024 times 1024 times 1024 is 1 1.07 billion tonal or shades of color, yeah? Absolutely amazing. Now, don't forget, this camera can now do not just 12-bit, but 14-bit photo uh, photographs in RAW. time lapse, which is about 46 trillion, yeah. 46 trillion shades of color. Incredible. You'll never probably get through that palette of colors. <laughs> but anyway, it's nice to have that in post-production. So subtle differences between 4208-bit and 4210-bit. On the left is 8-bit, sorry here, this is 8-bit now. This is 4210-bit, and notice the detail around the sun and the blowout on the 8-bit, and that's generally where it happens. 8-bit versus 10-bit, and also 10-bit 42, nice and smooth, banding on the left though with the 8-bit in the skies, and very smooth on the right with 4210-bit. So when you do get into post-production, it really does help to shoot in 422 10-bit. And the GH5S offers that, again, with that dual ISO um, um, tonality and um, sensor, um, which just really does give it much better color and luminance. So I would have 
whip through this, but we all know what codecs are. Remember, this has got a, an all intra and a long op codec. So you've got the long gop, you've got space saving. It will save the um, data down um, to a, a more sort of a predicted codec. With intra, every frame in itself is sampled. So it's better quality, but it does consume more bandwidth. But when it comes to editing, it's much easier. Having said that, for, it takes 400 megabits per second. So you've got 150 megabits per second long gop or all intra, 400 megabits per second. So you've got the benefit of both in this camera. Encoding-wise, well, GOP is, this is, what, this is what all intra looks like. It's all red, every frame is compressed in itself, so it's much, much better quality. This is prediction, so you've got intra frames interspersed by these predictive frames in the middle. But it saves on space and it still looks darn good. So you've got the best of both worlds. Bit rates, um, as you probably know, the 64 gigabyte card is about, I don't know, an hour, 10 minutes, I'm thinking I'm getting with 4K, uh, with long gop, and about 20 minutes with 422 10-bit. How are you getting on with your SD cards? What are you yeah, using? I just bought myself a 300 megabits per second SD card, and I'm, I'm, I'm actually able to capture the 400 megabit per second capability of this camera on the 300 Mbps card. I Is think that V90, I get about V60 kind of thing? 30, uh, 30, 40 minutes of like recording. So it must be what, 128 meg, uh, gigabyte card is it, or 250? No, 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 I have, I have a 128 and a 64 GB card right okay. now. Okay, so. so the 128 must be getting you 40 double. Yeah. So it's 20 yeah. minutes, 20 minutes on an SD card, 64 gigabyte card at 422, 10-bit, 400 uh, megabits per second. And that, it does actually look better, but I promise you, if you do shoot at those high quality codecs, much better than a sample of um, a low quality codec, which you get on HD or whatever. So 4K, shooting in 4K high quality but, in 422 10-bit is the but, way to but, go. But tell me, how do you play back all of this footage? You're shooting in 10-bit, 25 yep. frames per second, yep. 422, how do you watch it? Well, there's two ways of doing it. You can either, I always convert with uh, some numerous programs to convert it to uh, another all intro codec if you've shot in long gop, uh, because the arithmetic side, if you have got a slow computer, can take its time. Um, or you use the, uh, the, the, the replacement file, I forgot the name of the word for it, you mm. know what it is. Um, <laughs> there's a, uh, where you have a very small version of placeholder where you can play it back at very low resolution like in DaVinci Resolve, you can play it back at 720. Oh, yeah. And then uh, you can then render it out at full 4K. So you can process it still with a slower machine, but I do advise that, you know, most machines nowadays, and I think with the Mac and High Sierra, they are producing ways of playing back 10-bit um, footage very, very quickly. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, that's one thing that I'm need, needing proxy to do. Proxy file, that's the word. What is it? By proxy. Proxy so files. proxy files, yeah. you, anyone who's done post-production, you know what I'm talking about. How many about. people here do post-production? Editing? Yeah. Yeah, a couple of people. Do you yeah. go by proxy or do you f and edit full size? Proxies? Proxies. Yeah, it seems to be yeah. the way so most of So you've got to export go. it and then you can watch it smoothly. Yeah. Yeah. So a, pro a proxy is just a, a small version of a, a very high resolution file, very small in size, but it allows you to play it back on a, a slower computer. Um, but, you know, technology, Moore's Law, it, power does double every year, and, you know, we are getting there where we can play back all intro stuff. And all intro actually does play back better, as you know, than long gone. Ooh, here's a good idea. Maybe you can work on this hack. Yeah. You know, in the, in the very cams, you can have one card that has your raw, you know, your uncompressed, yep. and the second card, you can record proxies directly in camera. That's, Ooh, yeah, that's an idea that's a that good has, idea. That, that is an idea that has gone to Panasonic for yeah. this, especially with the dual ISO, yeah. sort of dual SD card um, support. So mm -hmm. it's something they're looking at, you know, and who so knows? So Nick looks all very innocent here, but he's actually a hacker. He's the first one to hack the Lumix GH2 cameras many years way ago. back ago. And yeah. now, now he doesn't do any of that. Yeah, the Driftwood hack went very big. I, was, I could have talked to you about it. A few years back in 2012, there was a shootout between cinema cameras and small cameras. And I was using the GH2 at the time. This Russian guy developed a hack, but it needed tools, it needed ways of 
or people to go through it and find you know, a, a way of discovering and pushing the codec. Um, we found a way of pushing the GH2 at the time to 150 megabits per second and all intra, which in 2012 was incredible. And it helped drive the market and change the market. And so hence why today we've now got really powerful codecs inside, not just Panasonic's, but other, other cameras as well. Um, so we've still got the lovely 225 area multi autofocus on the GH5S. Um, and you can select these with your finger. If you don't know what a GH5 or GH5S is, um, it's all touch screen. Uh, you've got 225 grid. You can just touch those and autofocus. As I said earlier, it's actually operating at 0.05 EV now. So it's that much quicker. It's one stop quicker than ever before. So autofocusing is very good. Uh, anamorphic mode still works. You can play that if you want. It's, this is a, a compressed GH5 and the GH5S supports anamorphic mode, open gate recording, which allows you to record a compressed image in a 4x3 full sensor space and then de squeeze it in, in the camera and see it go wide like this. And this is how it, this is how it looks cinema style, open gate, yeah, 4K anamorphic mode. So all support. And the color, again, once again, is beautiful with that, uh, uh, the 4210 bit and also the HDR HLG. That was shot in Brighton, again on the uh, Devil's Dyke. One day after take you down there, it's fantastic. Yeah, beautiful place you live in. Metering, as we all know, it's got all the, uh, the classics. So we've got multi-metering, the zonal matrix is fully supported. So if you're used to that and you've got other cameras, it's easy to, to move over to, to Panasonic. You know, you've got the zonal matrix support, center weighted metering and the classic spot metering but it's just that much easier much more intuitive i find on the gh range doesn't it absolutely yeah getting exposure we've got tools for wave and vector scopes uh, and a whole load of uh, um, sort of videography based shutting styles and that includes the shutter at 180 degrees shutter where um, the frame you always double the, the frame rate, as you know, but you can see and set angles on the GH5 or GH5S. And that means you can actually, if, you, if you're used to filming material, to get perfect motion blur, you set your camera up to a 180 degree angle. And then whenever you change your aperture or whatever, it just goes with it. And you know you've got perfect exposure in terms of you know, uh, transition between the two frames, or any two frames, that is. So perfect motion blur, just to show you what that does, if we just press play. Um, so if we're shooting at 25p or 24p with a 180 degree shutter, that's the same as a 150 of a second shutter speed. So you can see it also goes, gets darker and lighter. It changes with it, if you set it with 180 degree angles on these cameras, it'll do all the working out for you. You don't have to worry about it. So when we get to 180 degrees shot, you see the motion will become how the human eye sees it, okay? So 180 degrees shutter, always try and stick to that when you're shooting any kind of motion. And there it is. That looks right for the, uh, the way the wind is hitting the fan there. Anything faster, it's too blurry. 180 degrees sits right bang on. So it's 50% motion blur. I'm going to move on because you know about all this sort of stuff. It's the usual um, uh, exposure settings which this camera has got and very, very easy to set up. You've got ISO settings on the top and auto ISO. Um, if you don't want to be bothering with doing any ISO settings at all, you can set it on auto and it'll do it for you. All, uh, it'll do it all for you. Okay, white balance as well. I'm just showing a bit of hybrid log gamma in blue there, but it's, um, we can adjust the color temperature, daylight, like for example, 5600K. Here we are. All this can be done inside in Kelvins. And you can actually just, with the camera, just point it to a white card or a gray card, hit record, have four saved settings, and instantly it will set it up to the environment you're, you're actually filming in, which is really easy, isn't it? We'll show you that shortly when we get on the floor. Uh, and then obviously using scopes, here we have a, a waveform monitor which analyzes the brightness across the screen, the whole picture. And you can see where the sun is, it goes up. 
and you have this scope it's very good to see it inside on the EVF so you've got full exposure tools to get the exact right exposure we have the full 1024 luminance level especially if you're shooting a 422 10 bit 8 bit is 255 or 256 as some people say the anamorphic video mode and light 709 gamma if you're shooting for broadcast TV so this camera is fully supportive of every single flavor of broadcast that you can get to and then the color space gamut um, so we have rec 709 and when we film in hybrid log gamma and uh, we have uh, rec 2020 and there's tools on, available online to be able to help you deliver hybrid log gamma HDR you've also got a log a logarithmic curve um, which again is for um, HD TV 4k etc Vlog, Vlog Assist to help you expose correctly when you are in this very flat gamma. You have a Rec 709 LUT or overlay, or the same for a hybrid log gamma, which so you can see exactly how it's going to look uh, on your final presentation. So Vlog looks like this. We can just play. play. It's a very flat, like any log. Everyone knows, everyone knows log, Canon log, C, Sony log, Vlog on Panasonic. So it's very flat and grey, no LUT involved at all. You know, it's still okay, you can see it kind of thing. But then when the LUT is applied, um, you know, the Atomos, this one, it really does come much more alive, you know, much more colourful as to how it's going to be under a broadcast scenario. So you can load four different types of LUTs, right? You can have four LUTs yes. built in. Yes. So basically, just depending on what style your final product is going to be, you can have a LUT assigned so your monitor out can be exactly like how your final picture is going to be. So it's Vlog Assist. It's something that we never really had the ability in camera to see that. But that is a very crucial feature and something that professional cameras, uh, cameramen will love to see because Vlog is very flat. You can't focus correctly. It's all very gray. And just having the assist feature makes you sure about your shot and makes you know exactly what it looked like in the end. So here's an example. Here's a, I mean, I'm not sure we got this will play out as video, but um, you know, you can grade away in something like DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut Pro. Uh, in DaVinci Resolve, you've got the a way of saving your grades or LUTs. I make a lot of LUTs for people. And then you can use something like Lattice LUT Maker and it shows you how it looks, looks in Vlog and then how it looks with your, um, your look or your film grain as we like to call it, or film look. So you can give it a colouring, for example, if you're filming in the desert and you're filming in log, you might want to look how it's going to look when you grade it with lots of yellow to evoke that feeling of immersifying your audience in the desert, in the sandy sort of design of things. So here, you can overlay that LUT in camera and see exactly how it's going to look before you get back to post-production, which is really handy. As you said, there's four yeah. of those. Can that screen be made bigger? That's a good example right there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this one here, the, the, we probably can't make it bigger, okay. actually. Um, but yeah, this is DaVinci Resolve, uh, Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro. They all offer similar ways from the NLE to create LUTs. And then they're really good things to have. You can save them and load them in as .cube files into the GH5S. Um, the other thing is, another good tool is rack focusing we've got in the GH5 and the GH5S. So you've got the focus transition between background and foreground or up to three different points. If you set your tripod up, you can flip back and forth. Or you can do it handheld as this one has been doing. You can flip back and forth just by setups, by setting three different focus points. We we'll use two here, so backwards and forwards. You can see it's going between them. Really useful to have if you want to set it up, you know, and, and lock it down in place. And what I really love is the screen. You just touch screen. So if this person's here. You just touch the screen. Focuses there. You touch there. It just focuses there. Absolutely. It's I mean, the autofocus response is what 0 0.07. Yeah. I call it James Bond focus speed. It's really, really quick in this camera. And it's accurate. It's perfect. It's better than me trying to focus it. Yes. It's incredible. Yeah. I've just been playing around with it. And let me tell you, it spoils you. It does work so really much well. Easier. If you've got a lockdown scene, it does work very, very well indeed. I'm really yeah. happy with it. The other thing is, uh, Sandesh, is Simpty Time Curve we spoke about earlier. 
So this thing at the front here, this port, a little black cap comes off and you put the adapter into the, uh, the port. I can show you this later on if you want to see it. And you can match this up to other time code related cameras or audio devices or master devices. And this will jam lock to it in a very professional and accurate way. Uh, more so than any other Micro Four Thirds camera I've ever seen before. In fact, DSLR, in fact. Absolutely, yeah. Um, it's no it's lock steady. Um, I've actually rigged four of these together in a 360 camera rig, and they're all exactly, in, uh, when I get it back in post, uh, and put the four uh, cameras together for stitching, they're all locked on, perfect, beautiful. It's also very useful if you're doing sit-down interviews and a multi-camera setup without a proper time code lock, your interviews can be just slightly out of sync, which is very irritating in post. So with this, they're locked in, jammed in. You'll have no problem with a multi-camera setup. Okay, I think we're going to get on to... Uh, you know, so I just spoke earlier on about the Atomos. I can show you that when you come up. There are other external uh, conversion design uh, and the video devices, um, hard disk recorders available. But if you want 50p, 60p, the Atomos, I think at the moment, is the only current device which supports it. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, yeah. So it really works very well together. Um, so post-production and NLEs, fully supportive of the GH5S files. Um, you can bring them into the post-production, as we spoke about earlier on, Mac or Windows or even um, uh, Linux. Um, mm. You can get this working without a problem at all. So now we get to our uh, next bit on HDR. So what is it? So it stands for High Dynamic Range, yeah? And Hybrid Log Gamma was developed by NHK and the BBC to offer a very quick way of distributing or delivering the, the new high dynamic range standard. There are other uh, formats, we call it PQ, um, and, and uh, the, the HDR10 and HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision are sort of leaning in the PQ versions of HDR. But basically and essentially what it does it's a gamma curve, HLG is anyway, which kind of sits in between Rec 709 uh, standard color space and a, a log space. So it sits in the middle and it stays the same, you'll, you'll notice, in the low to mid tonal range. And it's only when the highlights kick off, it starts to give her a much wider yeah, frequency, uh, frequency trap. So it can actually uh, receive and record high detail in the highlights, in the high frequencies. And that's why HDR is really taking off. We measure televisions in, in candelas per square meter or um, centimeter, um, or nits as we call it. TVs which we currently see, like over here, uh, the, 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 the known TVs and this one, they're probably about, I don't know, um, six nits or something like that. So, sorry, uh, 600 nits. Whereas HDR goes to 1,000 nits or above, all the way up to 20,000 nits. So it's seeing something like, with, with HD, we see about six stops. With, um, with HDR, we can see it currently about 10 stops over there. We see about 28 stops, human beings. So you can see we go a long, long way before things like Dolby Vision, which are trying to push 20,000 nits in the future. So. We're at the beginning of this revolution in TV technology and monitors at home with computers so we can all edit and, and post-produce really good looking footage, very realistic. So at the very start of this revolution, and the great thing about hybrid log gamma, which has been developed by BBC and NHK is, as I said earlier, it's instantly available and also backwards compatible with the older TV sets. So Rec 709, it will play back quite happily and look fairly good or you can put a LUT on it to make it look even better. But HDI is really taking off. And we've made a few films, um, which kind of shows this wider brightness range. And um, hopefully, we'll be able to get one of yours up, Sandesh. <laughs> oh, I'm going to explain.
So uh, what you basically saw is a video that's just been very, very quickly edited, no color corrections done. First time I'm seeing it on the big screen right now, just downloaded, downloaded the file off of WeTransfer. A couple of things to change, but I was very happy in the way that the colors of this camera came out. And the fact that the campfire scene, I would not be able to shoot that previously. Just to have that higher extended ISO, I can shoot much later into the night. I do a lot of wildlife and documentary stuff. So it's very nice to have a small handy camera going all over Africa, getting bits and pieces of video. And all of this is archive and it's broadcastable archive because it meets all of the minimum tech specs of the broadcasters like National Geographic or the BBC. So when you have those high bars set, you need a camera that can raise that bar and capture the kind of material in your day-to-day -day life and be able to do something with it. And that's just a quick result. It's not great, so don't criticize me on that one I yet. Think, I th I think but I want to see some, some stuff that you, you, you guys have done. I know you and uh, you've been working with Dickie Singh back there can on a tiger on, film. Dickie, come up here come on, a come on, Dickie, let's, let's have you up here. Okay, so he's an experienced professional wildlife filmmaker, as you all know, very well known Sandesh is. Um, but this man is one of the... He is a storyteller. He's a real storyteller. I think he now is... you've made him a poet. But I don't want to give too much away just yet. No, that's fine. Um, but it, let's, let's talk about him. So you met him how long ago? Oh, so, uh, well, uh, 20 years ago. I'm giving away my age now. So... Dickie Singh is his how name. How many people here have been to Ranthambore? Ranthambore? One. One. Whoa, two. Three. Okay, we got about... Oh, my God. Dickie, you have a market waiting for you here. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I've been going to Rantambo for about 21 years, pretty much the same time as I met uh, Dickie here. And Nick came here last year to launch the GH5. And again, uh, a few months ago, he said, I want to go see a tiger. I said, OK. You wanna, he wanted to make a film on a tiger. I said, I know exactly who you There's need to meet. Yeah. And that's this man right here, Dickie Singh. Hi, Dickie. Welcome, welcome Hi. aboard. Hi, yeah. Dickie, so, you know, you're a photographer and you've become a, a videographer now and you've helped me out a lot with this film, which you're about to see for the first time, which is the cut one. Yeah, so but I, tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, so, my name is Dickie Singh. I've been living in Ranthambore for about 20 years. Uh, I've been a still photographer for 20 years. Two and a half years ago, I met Sandesh and he got me hooked to the GH4. You met me 20 years ago. Yeah, but then two and a half years ago, you made me spend a lakh. And I got a GH4, and I started shooting video clips. Uh, last year, I switched to a GH5, and hopefully, day after, I switch to GH5S. So every time I meet these two guys, I end up spending a lakh or lakh and a half. Uh, but it's yeah, but it's uh, <laughs> getting better and better. Uh, so I just shoot videos. I have no idea how to edit them. I have. I just learned. Well, that just like you guys, seriously, you know. Yeah, I just learned that 422, what it really means. Uh, but because I live in Ranthambore, I have tigers in my backyard, literally. Uh, I, know the, I know their behavior, I know where they'll come out. If they go into this bush, they're going to come out there. I can shoot quite well. Uh, we just did a film together in Ranthambore, which... Uh, William Blake poem, isn't it? Basically? Yeah, we did a poem <laughs> together. There's a, we had a poetry session in Ranthambore, which we're going to just show you. Great, so Let's watch the film. this is going to get seriously tech. We're under the cost here from this man, who's a, a serious wildlife professional. I'm sure some of you guys are as well. So let's see how we've done. Please, Mr. Play, uh, music, will you play? Tiger, tiger. As they say. And turn the volume up, because it's his, his poem. Can they turn this light off? These lights on the screen? Anywhere on okay, the screen to better. play. Yeah. Anywhere on the screen. Touch it anywhere on the screen. That's the same one as we want. <laughs> Okay, touch this one anywhere on the screen. Because this is our one, Sandesh. <laughs> I thought you wanted to watch mine again. The Tiger by William Blake. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forest of the night. What immortal hand or eye could frame that fearful symmetry? What 
distant deeps or skies burnt the fires of thine eyes. On what wings dare he aspire? What the hand dare seize the fire? And what shoulder and what art could twist the sinews of thy heart? And when thy heart began to beat, what dread hand and what dread feet? Wow. I'm just going to say, you've seen that played back at very low resolution HD to get it inside a PowerPoint presentation. None of the artifacts you just saw were on display. And when you see it on YouTube, when it goes up finally, it'll look pure and beautiful and amazing. I think we've done a good job. I, are we, yeah, are we good beginners, sir? You're making me nostalgic. I feel like going back to Rantambor right now. <laughs> Who wants to go to Rantambor after seeing that? Yeah? So, uh... You might take my job away from me. You're starting to make wildlife films. I thought you were doing only drama. No, no. Working on it. <laughs> yeah, I much prefer drama is my thing. But when I was invited out by Panasonic to shoot animals, I instantly thought of Dickie's invite to come to Ranthambore uh, and his lodge, uh, the Ranthambore uh, Baj. Is that right? Yeah. And um, a beautiful place he's got to stay over there. And wow, I mean, some of the most amazing scenery, people, places as well as a beautiful national park. Um, what a place to take a camera, and we were so privileged. And we spent only, what, five days in the park yeah, there? Five days over there. With this beauty and the GH5, and we both shot together with numerous lenses, a 200 millimeter lens. Absolutely fabulous, isn't it? Yeah. Was that and all the, on autofocus, or I mean, how, how do you, what, what about focusing with this camera for wildlife in this scenario? Well, we took it? the tips that you gave us, really. So where we had to, I was actually autofocusing really quick, 0.07 of a second, and then manually adjusting. Um, but if you are looking through a screen, you can touch, but you haven't often got time for that. So what I do, I've got um, a little device, very simple. Uh, these are available quite cheap on the GH5, GH5S um, Facebook sites. This locks in, it's just a, a visual visor and it just locks into the cage which protects it. These are very cheap to get. And this is about two or three times on the LCD display. You can plug that in. Um, and that'll fit around it. And you can just look down it, like you would do with a professional uh, um, a camera costing many, many more times as much money. And I find I've got a really good, uh, good job out of it. Well, Dickie's got his own job. techniques for shooting wildlife. Bean bags I, and yeah, actually I shoot off a bean bag. Uh, 
uh, uh, use, I ideally like a light camera, so GH5 and GH5S are just perfect. Uh, it's, the way I shoot, it's not, it's not, I don't have the time to set up a tripod. I need to get into it in a few seconds. So I carry a lot of bean bags, just set them up, put the camera. Sometimes, your first few seconds, your horizon is slightly tilted, but you get it right. Uh, it's much faster, especially if action's happening. If, uh, with tigers, quite often they give you a few seconds and uh, the action's over. So you need to be able to set it up in those few seconds. So I prefer to shoot with a bean bag, set that up, the camera on top, and that's it. But it's very fast, the autofocus, isn't it, as well? Autofocus is really fast, yeah. So, so you can first, set yourself I, even up. Even I take the first focus using the autofocus and then, then, then adjust manually. So a combination of both, autofocus and man can be done on these cameras. Really, really good and easy, and, and a, a, especially with that 200mm lens. Have a look at it, it's in the back there. There's also the 100, 400. And these are the equivalent, if you double the focal length, you see the equivalent in 35mm terms of a 200 to 800 and the 200 obviously a 400 and they're much lighter you know much more i mean they're, they're still fairly robust beautiful glass from leica um, with the partnership with panasonic um, and i think you you know if you get that on one of your cameras you're going to really love the pictures it comes up the colors amazing yeah, exactly i mean the form factor it's small 200 to uh, 800 range in a national park like that is just ideal you can get close-ups of birds you can get close-ups of the animals and, and you can climb up, you know, do you go up the fort? Yes. Yeah, it's so easy to carry a 200 to 400, I mean a 100, 400 lens, 800 mm equivalent. Otherwise you're carrying a huge 800 mm lens is usually that big and about six, seven, eight kilos. Eight kilos, 10 kilos. And this is about one kilo and it's only about that big. So it makes a huge difference when you're having to walk and hike and carry equipment around. Like in the earlier presentation, you know, I can have an entire 4K kit in the bottom compartment of my laptop bag, all the lenses I need as a filmmaker or a photographer all fits perfectly in, in about that much space, yeah, which fantastic. is great. And, and, and likewise, coming over from England all the way to India meant I could just pack you know, four or five, six, six choices of lenses, uh, where if with any other camera, like a full frame camera from Canons and all that sort of thing, you, you, you nail down to one or two lenses. So for yeah. travel, the, the Micro Four Thirds format with this GH5S camera um, and its low light ability and its um, dual ISO, uh, uh, native ISO uh, 400 and 2500 and in log or HLG it's double that, so 800, 5000. Um, incredible, the colors coming out of it, 422 10-bit. Yeah, and what, what just a summary. the fact that it's like a, it's like a one-stop shop. It's like a, a one camera that can pretty much do it all for you. So I've got, I can do time lapses, I can do high frame rate. Talking of I which. Every, talking of which time lapses, here's something recently shot from Ladakh. I'm just coming back from Ladakh, so here's the time lapse from there. My base camp is 14,000 feet above sea level, and that's the view. Oh, yeah, one more thing I was talking about earlier. I left the camera out in minus 20 degrees in the <laughs> snow all night long, getting some of these star time lapses at night, and it withheld. I mean, I kept it covered a little bit, but I was able to get beautiful star time lapses all night long. I got about 300 frames before the camera died. That's about 10 seconds of video, which is, which is pretty incredible, especially in such low light. And I can tell you I was using some other batteries from other, other cameras, and I lost two Canon batteries. Really? They died yeah. overnight. Yeah. Next day, I kept charging them. They're not charging. But the Lumix batteries, Beautiful they're still good. They're still working. And some of those shots you saw of the stars, 1600 ISO. At 1600 ISO, I wow. was able to get enough light to get those night time lapses. If I went to 2500, that landscape at, in the middle of the night looked like daytime. So I love the sensitivity on this new camera. 
just the fact that it's larger pixels, absorbs more light, and actually gives you much more dynamic range and what you can see is far better than earlier. <laughs> yeah. So have we passed your test as, as beginners? Hey. Of, well, not me. How do you guys like the Tiger not, Tiger film? Tiger Tiger, burning bright. That's a good idea, by the way. Yeah, it's fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, well it done, beautifully so done. Well. But yeah. Dickie's uh, narrative, his, the way he versed it was beautiful, so well delivered. He's a natural, he doesn't know he is, he's a poet. Yeah, yeah he's there. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to say, I'm Nick Driftwood, Sandesh over there and Dickie here. Um, there's my contact details. If you'd like to give out your pages, yeah. I know you've got a great online presence. And Dickie, you just finished an exhibition in Delhi, haven't you? Yeah, so I just finished one, yeah. Just tell everyone where we can see more of your work. Uh, so on Google, just I'm at Dickie Singh, D-I-C-K-Y-S-I-N-G. That's my Instagram, that's my Facebook feed. That's, I'm Dickie Singh on and the pictures cool. are absolutely amazing on there, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Oh, the exhibition was outstanding. Um, one thing which I'd like to add, which both of you forgot. So, like, I, I'm a, I've been a still photographer for 18 years. Uh, I've taken both the GH5 and I've tried with the GH5S. It takes really good still pictures. Till uh, three or four years ago, we thought that there's no way a mirrorless camera can even think of competing with a DSLR. Uh, I normally shoot with very high-end Nikon cameras, but the GH5 and the GH5S for wildlife, especially with the 200 uh, f2.8 lens, is fantastic. It's it's just it's there. It's it's on top. Oh, I can see that. Yeah, definitely. And what your a, pictures? He's one of the judges, so I'm not supposed to tell him. But I have two pictures in the <laughs> final rounds of BBC Wildlife Photographer of the Year from GH5s. Oh, really? Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. I haven't heard it. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, haven't heard it, yeah. <laughs> and Sandesh, can you let people know where they can find you? Yeah, so if you want to follow my work or see more of my work with, with these cameras and see more work about wildlife and um, filmmaking and stuff, you can go to Instagram, Sandesh underscore Kadur, K-A-D-U-R, and you'll find a lot of my work, a lot of my new examples with the new cameras, the new toys, and uh, just some fun shooting tips and techniques being put on there every now and then. I've got some cards on there. I have some business cards if anyone wants them. Now we're going to have a, a Q&A now and then we're going to have a, a play with the, the cameras, get you guys to have a go with the GH5S so that you can see exactly how good it is. Before we do that we're going to get a microphone and we're going to offer you the chance to ask us all some questions. So have we got a, a microphone there yet? Hitasha? Yeah, just a quick show of hands. How many people here are into right. uh, filmmaking? How many people into photography? I'll give you that. Too. Okay, so it's almost like an even, even percentage of both. Now, one of the things that I like, uh, Dickie, I started off as a still photographer and slowly, slowly made my transition into filmmaking. It's a natural tr progression and natural transition. Uh, so we're here to answer questions on both. And please. Yeah, I am uh, uh, Vimal Mehta. I am essentially a still photographer that do more of a travel and a candid and street photography. I had a very serious interest to shift into cinematography or filmmaking. I've already made few films, but used other cameras, not my own. Okay. <laughs> and neither did I shoot myself. And um, I have attended 4K um, workshops of the Panasonic earlier and that. So you are saying it is G5S, the solution. And that means, as the, right girl, as the girl, the anchor said, that there was a problem. And the solution has been given. But I guess uh, if I shift into this camera, I have yet not purchased G5 or G4 that matter. I need to have two equipments, one for still and one for video, because the megapixels have been reduced and um, as everybody says, it's too difficult to carry your own weight and two cameras. <laughs> so why so? Why, why the still has been compromised to that an extent? That's my question as of this moment. So why has the still part been compromised for the video? Now, why has the, because what we have here is a, a camera which is targeting professional videographers and filmmakers and cinema makers who have come to Panasonic and asked 
uh, many, many people have wanted the removal of the, uh, the Ibis, for one thing. They wanted a camera which they could, um, sorry, I'm not mic'd in at the moment. Can you hear me okay? They wanted a camera which could be used with you know, stabilizers such as this one. Uh, this is the Crane 2, um, the, 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 the Ronins of this world or other tripods etc and drones which didn't move because the sensor in the GH5 um, moves when you're making movies and um, if you're doing things like car photography or sorry filmography um, the sensor the shake of the actual sensor in the GH5 negates really it actually ruins a lot of your pictures so this is really what's led to this development of this fantastic camera and together with all those other options like the, the ISO, dual native ISO, which is borrowed from the cinema Vericam. We're getting Vericam cinema quality uh, functionality in this tiny camera, you know, dual ISO, beautiful, perfect, clean signals at 400 ISO and uh, 2500 ISO. Uh, Nick, no. of course, uh, what you explained. Yep. You just repeated what has already been said in the last one and a half okay. hour. I, My question was very simple. Yep. A person like me, I'm shifting from a travel writer, travel photographer, yep. into a filmmaking. So let's say I go to Ranthambore tomorrow, if I've never been to. Okay, still to photo. I want to make some wildlife still shoots, which I want to blow up into a bigger size. Yep. And I also want to use that trap to yep. make some video, short video clippings to put on the YouTube. Let's put it this way. Simple. I think if you're in the hybrid now, market... Now, yeah. do I need to carry the same equipment or do I need to carry one, one for the still and one for the video? Right? That's a simple question as of this moment. No, I think, uh, I think your original idea of the, high, the, the GH5 is a hybrid camera. I think in your particular case, you're probably quite right to stick with the GH5 if you're doing photography and video. However, if you're leaning, like Dickie is getting into videographer and filmmaking, as a photographer, he's probably best qualified to answer this one. Uh, so, uh, megapixel, okay. So, basically, my first digital camera that I had, the DSLR, was a four megapixel camera. I just finished a exhibition today. Uh, in fact, they're packing up right now while I'm here. Uh, we blew up one print we printed this, this talking tiger image at six feet by four feet. This was from a four megapixel camera. So megapixels, I think four megapixel is a lot. Uh, front, typically most, some of the biggest prints that we'll do would be a front cover of a magazine. Uh, two megapixel is enough for that. Anything six megapixel or eight megapixel, you can blow it to huge, huge sizes. Like the printer, I use the biggest, the widest I can go is 90 inches. Uh, six megapixel will do it. He just finished an art exhibit so, right here at the Oddbird Theatre in Delhi and he had like big, big prints. So that was going to be my answer as well to your question. <laughs> because I make books, I make coffee table books. I used to be a photographer and I had a six megapixel camera back then. And with a six to eight megapixel photo camera, I was able to print beautiful Double pictures. Spread magazines, in the book, in a coffee table, large, lavish production. That's all you need in terms of me megapixels. This camera already delivers your 10.28 megapixels in camera, 14-bit RAW files as a still camera. But if you need that extra bump, then you need, you know, the GH5 has a 20 megapixel sensor. But let me tell you, the megapixel is another marketing thing, okay, it helps sell more cameras. So just the fact that Lumix GH5S has gone back in terms of what people's perception, like, oh my God, they've gone from 20 to 10 megapixels. Oh my God, it'll be terrible. That's a misconception because it's still a very capable photographic camera. So you can still have your production pictures done for magazines, books, whatever you need, and you don't have to compromise. But if you are one of those, the purists who wants that extra bump of megapixels, then the GH5 is a hybrid camera. It does 4K, 10-bit, 422 internal, um, and you get your 20 megapixel raw image. Mm. So I I'll hope that answers your the, question. One better. little last thing. If your blow-ups in photography aren't going to be too huge and you're, you're doing a, up to A3, then the GH5S with that dual ISO 
will get you better photos in the dark anyway if you don't need the resolution. So there's a couple of arguments there for the photographer. Well, it's a balancing act. It is a, it he, is a balancing he act. He already, uh, you, you see, you put the right guy to give me a reply. He has already told that this, this meeting of yours is going to cost him a lag. He has already given his opinion <laughs> that he's going to shift to 5S. And you see, but I cannot be as friendly with tigers as you are. Yeah. So you can take a <laughs> 6 megapixel and you can ask them to pose for you, but not for me. <laughs> Thank you so much for your question. Anyone else who's got some questions they'd like to ask? I saw a lot of hands up earlier on. Have we answered too many there? Come we on, don't be shy. Anyone got a question? You, sir. You had a question, didn't you, earlier on? Yeah. Go on, Great. give them the microphone. I know you've got a question, the way you're looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is Siddharth Malkania. Uh, the, way, the way you said that, I, that, that, was, that question was also in my mind, you know, that from 20 to 10 megapixel, right? And you said that you shot on 6 megapixel camera. May I know which camera it was? Back then I used the Canon 10D. It was about 10 years ago when I did my and book. And what was the ISO there in then camera? Oh, I could probably go up to 800 oh. ISO maximum. Yeah. So probably, I think there was a time when the Sir Henry Cartier-Bresson shot the photos on 25 ISO also, right? <laughs> he, he shot the photos in, in, in Paris. So when, I believe when I, you, you, um, you know, use the high ISO, I, it's just my query. When I will blow up the ISO, so when then the megapixel supports me or not? See, it's a low light camera. I will be pull up, I, 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 I do a photography in low light situations, right? So I will be using 10,000, 15 or 16 or 20,000 ISO, then my 10 megapixel camera, I think there will be a noise or not in that situation. That is my query. As you go up in ISO, there is also going to be higher noise. So yeah. you saw the graph that Nick showed, the signal to noise ratio. So currently that signal to noise ratio is one of the best that you can see the with same. the GH5S. At the high, native okay. ISO, and as the low. That's incredible, the noise is the same. They're tuned, those analog circuits are tuned for each of those starting points. So that when you do start adding gain, because there's no gain there when you, that shotty effect as we all know in cinema terms, um, where the sensor noise is only coming into, into the fray with the GH5S, like the EVA1 and the Varicams. Other cameras, you're going to get gain noise, that yeah. real, uh, that sort of added, right. um, you know, gain stuff which we don't really like. So, going back to that, that's the cleanest signal I've ever seen in a Micro Four Thirds camera. It's absolutely incredible. Thanks. Now, we're getting full frames quality out of this, seriously. In fact, perceptually, 14 stops of dynamic range. It's not physically 14 stops, as we all know, but because of that circuitry and what it's doing with those native ISOs, it looks like, to the human eye, 14 stops. In fact, even for the American Panasonic guy, one of the map over there, to say it was 14 stops. It isn't, but it darn well looks like it. It's incredible. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Are this guy's itching for a quote? Oh, next. <laughs> Thank you so much for this camera. Hello. Yeah. Uh, this camera is very good. So my question is, uh, being an independent uh, for a filmmaker, so we often use uh, like different lenses on the different cameras. So we can't afford to buy a new cam new lens every time. We, uh, being an independent, you know. So like, what is the possibility of changing the lens in uh, this uh, camera? Or like, uh, you know. Some Sam Young and uh, any other uh, camp, uh, the company who made the lenses for everyone. So, what is the possibility of the changing the lens? You know? I, I use different lenses all the time. Yeah. So, uh, all you need is an adapter. Like Metabones makes yeah. an adapter. Okay. Uh, Photodiox is another company that makes an adapter. Okay. I think they made a universal adapter right now. You know, a I'll universal try. adapter that adapts different lenses with That's one right. adapter. Yeah. And you can have your Nikon, Canon, whatever other brands of lenses, Sam Yang that you use natively go to micro four thirds. And it's really good because that adds a lot of flexibility to your shooting style. So being a lower third uh, uh, sensor sensor on the like previous camera of GS5, the lower third, you know, this, uh, you know, so uh, is there an effect of like, you know, the, uh, sem uh, the quality of the- what, micro four third current yeah. lenses from Panasonic, no, no, they work perfectly fine. Okay. with the GH5 and the GH5S. Okay. And indeed, when you talked about the Ultra Metabones adapter, yeah. the 0.71. Someone was saying with the Sigma, 
style Canon EF lenses style, you know, that the, you get um, the netting. I've actually been trying the 18 to 35 out with the Ultra 0.71, I can't see it. It's perfect, and the autofocus speed is 0.07. So yes, you can, if you have got Canon glass, it works fine with the GH5S as well. I, I've had GH5. very good focusing success with Canon glass on the uh, GH5. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah. Micro Four Thirds uh, lenses from Panasonic, Leica, were absolutely as well as they did on the GH5. Okay. I think one thing that I Thank missed you. in the presentation is the uh, autofocus tracking ability. Now, with the native lenses, what I've been seeing with the GH5S, superb autofocus tracking. I am normally a person that does not use autofocus because I think it's too slow, but now autofocus has become faster than me. So I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna switch it in autofocus, locks on, you can walk with it, you can take your shots, you can pan with it, and it stays on your target, which is what I really, I'm really, really yeah. impressed with it's that improvement it's in the this best camera, yet, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's better than GH5, definitely. Even. And um, no doubt, no doubt yeah, about that. Best Micro Four Thirds mm. uh, autofocusing I've seen yet, definitely. Yeah. Any more questions? Uh, back right. there. Back. I have a question. Uh, well, raw footage videos, like video cameras, are always good for visual effects. So I, my question is related to the same thing, whether this GH5S is good for the visual effect videos which goes on post-production things and all? Yeah. Uh, so and we uh, to a how good is it? We record to a codec, um, it's at internally H.264 and HEVC. If you switch it over to the hybrid log gamma, you can shoot it at 72 megabits per second HEVC, which is H.265, which is half the data rate of H.264, so a big saving. Um, so it's a dual format codec inside this camera. Um, but then again, if you want ProRes or you know, like all intra ProRes codecs, you shoot for the HDMI. With the raw side, it's only in time lapse, stop motion animation where you shoot in RAW and you select between 12-bit or 14-bit and we can show you shortly and there are settings to make those images, that collection of images into a video. In fact, you've used this, Dickie, haven't you, quite a lot? Yeah. The stop motion stuff and animation. Yeah. So I, 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 I use a lot of stop motion uh, uh, time, lapse uh, time lapses shooting on RAW and then uh, so the camera stitches it on, uh, by itself, which is really, really good. Saves but, a lot of time. Yeah, saves you a lot of time. But in case you want to really process it, you can use some softwares and like uh, open up the files on, say, Lightroom and stitch them back as raw. They, they are really good. I used to shoot time lapses earlier with a D800, uh, with a Nikon D800, which was quite cumbersome because one, the camera is pretty heavy, you need a very rock solid tripod. With GH5, uh, I use a desktop tripod which I can carry in my pocket. And uh, even in very windy conditions, it works perfectly. Does that answer your question? Uh, kind of? I don't think so. Or you after so. raw recording? So no, I think he was up after uh, raw the recording. I think, uh, I think, I think uh, we, we, one of the things that is going to answer your question is was uh, the slide that Nick put up earlier in terms of the 10-bit and the 8-bit and the 420 and the 422. 422 and 444. So what you need is 422 10-bit to do your green screen, production. cut out and those right, types of For the of visual effects videos. For, visual for example, effects. if there is a low-budget filmmaker. Yes and uh, they are tra like planning something to go for you know visual effect things and all yeah but yeah as we all know that raw videos are always good like 444 four, four is tell always me, good one, one, what is raw video raw is like your 444 four, four, capturing mm. yeah okay but as we saw on the screen that gh5s has 422 right so I just want to know whether is it compatible for all those things? Like if somebody is going yeah, for a low budget for green screen, cinema um, yeah, I mean, and uh, all, and to add those visual effects into that. Visual so effects. will it Cutting be compatible for effects. those? Yes. You cut with got the it, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, 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 no. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I knew exactly what he was uh, asking about. 
So uh, to answer your question, there's very few of the cameras that actually produce RAW. I use a RED, and they call it RED RAW, right? Now, RED RAW isn't really RAW RAW, because you still have 7-1 compression, 6-1 compression, 4-1 compression, 2-1 compression, Lossy and all losses. of that. And I also use a Vericam, Panasonic Vericam. And even in that, you're bo mostly recording either 444 or 422, and pretty much most of our workflow is done in 422, even for our visual effects. And this camera also, also does 422 10-bit, which is the mode you need to use for your visual effect, color correction, adding graphics, and all of that into the image. You cannot do it at 8-bit, 420, you cannot. In high speed, in the high speed modes, you cannot. But in the 25 frame per second and the 50, 60 frame per second modes, you can still use it for all your graphics, visual effects needs, as long as you keep your setting at 422 10-bit color. That's yeah. the minimum that you need to keep it at, and you'll be able to do all your graphic animation. Yeah, and with that extra tonality, especially with the, I do a lot of green screen work, so if you've got more shades, Picking out, uh, you know, background, cutting it out, air, cutting it out is so much purer, so much easier. Otherwise, so what tender. happens is it becomes blocky. Your cut, your cut you along know. here, it right. become patchy. Right. So you, if, when when you do it in ten bit, it becomes nice and smooth. Yeah. Yeah. All good. Uh, I have two questions. Okay. Uh, apart from this raw video, can we record? Uh, slow motion and the fast motion in its uh, itself. Two frames to 240 frames. No, that that is uh, only we can uh, change Actually, the frame uh, frame rate. Uh, how smooth it, will it be at the time of editing? So you saw the last video was the time lapse, which was one frame per second. Yeah. One frame every five seconds. Oh, and one frame every 30 seconds. Like you stitch it up. together, it's nice and smooth. And then you saw Nick's example of uh, 240 frames per second, the surfing video, right? Yeah. So that was in high definition, full HD at 240 frames per second. So high speed to time lapse, the entire gamut, you can do it. And yeah. it's very smooth. But only in HD, unfortunately. The, the variable frame rate but, is but, HD. But, yeah. but when we play... 60p 4K, 60. up to 60, 2 to 60 when, in 4K. When we play so in the camera... Pardon me? When we play it in the camera, it doesn't give that effect. It doesn't, sorry? It does. It, it does not give that effect when you play it in the camera. Oh, it does. It plays it back at the speed of the rate you recorded it in in camera. Now here's another little it, trick, it, which is it, nice though. It you stucks, can it stucks in the middle. You can record in VFR slow-mo internally. Externally in HDMI, you can record in real time of the, the wrap that it's in. So if you set it to 24p or 25p or 30p, through the HDMI, it'll record at that mode, that speed, whilst you're recording in slow-mo internally at the same time. Not a lot of, not many people know about that. It's a really nice little uh, caveat, I suppose. Okay. Yeah. I will try that one also. And one more question is here: uh, Is there any lens coming with uh, for this camera, which can uh, you, which can be used uh, for zooming, zoom in or zoom out, motorized any, zooming? Well, as in powered zooming. Power zooming. We already yes. have two power zooms. Um, from Panasonic available. They've been out for three or four years and they do work like video lenses do. Powered zoom with the powered telephoto button. Um, so if you're doing a lot of videos and that's the, the way you prefer, there's two classic lenses. Is that not right, Gurav? Yeah. Um, is there any, any more Gurav. lenses like that coming out, Hitesh or Gurav, do you know of? Yeah? So you never know. They're, I mean, Panasonic have got 31 lenses now of choice quite incredible um, there's, there's a lens for everyone every need and they're always adding to it and the partnership with Leica is amazing isn't it thank you so much thank you, thank you. any more questions before we get around and have a look around so anyone, who wants to go on the, uh, the camera <laughs> uh, hi I am video editor uh, Sanjeev Sharma my name and I have one question there are any alerts uh, for color grading for this camera for fix any alerts like we are shooting for 
म्यूजिक वीडियो एंड वैन वी आर कलर ग्रेडिंग दैट नॉट गुड कलर ग्रेडिंग इफेक्ट तो देर आर एनी फिक्स लट्स फॉर वैन वी आर शूटिंग ऑन रॉ फुटेज फ्लैट प्रोफाइल दैन वी विल कलर ग्रेडिंग ऑन दैट लट्स दैट इज परमानेंट देर आर मैनी लट्स बट वी आर कन्फ्यूजिंग विच वी विच वी आर यूजिंग ऑन दैट video I, i kind of agree with you I, i'm producing a set of lots which they do one or two different functions one is a simple transform from one color space to another like vlog to rec 709 i've done one free on my site which is um hybrid log gamma rec 2020 at gamma 2.4 to rec 709 2.4 and uh also to linear Um, there's a lot on my site coming which does that transform so it'll try it'll transform the color into the correct color space without crushing the blacks or blowing out the highlights so that's one thing and then the other things are obviously I'm doing color grades which will be named accordingly around the kind of things that I do so it'll be separated but I agree with you there's a lot of lots out there where it gets very confusing and they they're badly named and we talked about this earlier didn't we so it gets very very difficult to to see what is a good lot what is a bad lot and of course you can quite easily go out there and make your own with lattice you know or other programs so for now you can download some of the lots from nick's website okay yeah nickdrift.com i've got a business card if anyone wants one later on i can circulate any more questions Yeah. Okay, well let's um who wants to have a look at we're going to show some stuff now over here in the demo zone. We're going to show you what this dual ISO is really like. We've got a, a a team of people dressed in dark clothing in a very dark room. We're going to bring it into about 2500 ISO, uh the native the high ISO native ISO and we're going to have a look at it. So we're going to show it on this monitor here and then we're going to go next door and show you some 240 frames per second slow mo okay and then um, if you want to have a look at the hdr stuff we got two lovely monitors over there which will show you the comparisons of a few videos we've wait, done wait 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 before you go there um uh any other qu- are you sure there's no other questions i don't audience? know are there any more questions does anybody want to know what the price of the camera is do you all know that already i i don't know is it already announced i don't even know what the price is well hit test you want to come out or sir namaskar i can only hindi speak theek hai boli speak up main next good in hindi now yes yes right main puchna chahta hu ki jaise ye market mein kab milega camera aur iska price jo hai 24 70 ke sath jo hai 2.8 mein kitne ka price milega wo price ka bare mein hitesh sir answer karega na price ke bare mein i'll be so uh, the कैमरा जो है वो कल से मार्केट में अवेलेबल होगा आप यहाँ पे कैमरा बुक भी करवा सकते हैं आ, और जो कैमरा है वो बॉडी ओनली आएगा और बॉडी का जो प्राइस रहेगा वो वन एटी फोर नाइन नाइन जीरो रहेगा ये बॉडी ओनली प्राइस है जो वन एटी फोर नाइन नाइन जीरो ओनली बॉडी हाँ जी किट के साथ कैमरा नहीं आ रहा इट्स कमिंग ओनली बॉडी जी किट हम ले जाएंगे अभी सो अभी तो बॉडी के साथ में आ रहा है बट वी हैव ऑलमोस्ट थर्टी वन लेंसेज पूरा रेंज है लेंसेज का प्राइस शुरू होता है बारह हज़ार रुपये से दो लाख रुपये तक सारे लेंसेज अवेलेबल हैं बट जी एच फाइव जो आएगा वो किट के साथ में आएगा बारह साठ वाले विच इज़ इक्वल टू अ ट्वेंटी फोर वन ट्वेंटी बट जी एच फाइव एस अभी सिर्फ बॉडी के साथ में आएगा फाइव एस अवेलेबिलिटी इज फ्रॉम मंडे वन एटी फोर या सो लेट्स हैव लुक एट दिस रेवोल्यूशनरी कैमरा एज अ यू नो दिस इज अ सीरियसली प्रोफेशनल कैमरा नाउ इन साइड अ स्मॉल बॉडी लेट्स कैन हैव लुक ओवर हेयर एंड सी वॉट वी कैन डू विद इट कूल या थैंक यू सो लेट्स कम टू द डेमो एरिया यू कैन एक्चुअली विटनेस दर्फॉर्मेंस ऑफ द कैमरा ओवर हेयर right from it's expanding because of the dual native iso in a very dark zone you can actually see so let's get the camera live you can see that there is very low light over here within this light we'll be shooting 
and the best part is that your dual native ISO, the second ISO is, uh, the second native ISO is 2500.